is going to be delivering your back pocket speech this evening. Go to bed early and get up late. <laughs> Do we really think that sleep's important? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how many hours do we need to sleep each night? Seven. Seven. How many hours did Einstein sleep? Four. Four. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. What he ever do? Fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> and guests. I'll speak a little bit about sleep tonight. Now, the levels of sleep, if you're not aware of them, take about an hour and a half on their cycles. At the start of the sleep, you go into a, what they call, shallow sleep. So during this one and a half hours, you can be easily woken up, which probably, that's happened to a lot of us. Then we go into the next levels of sleeping, where you're progressing from early sleep to a deeper sleep phase. And during this phase, we forget about the surroundings. We're starting to relax. Our heartbeat starts slowing. Our temperature starts dropping. <clears throat> and then in the deep sleep phase, which comes usually third, it's very strange because you're not aware of any of the surroundings during this deep sleep. And your body's at the most relaxed state. Your temperature is the lowest. Your heart rate is slow. However, your brain is wide open. That's where we have the realm. That's where you dream. So it's sort of a dichotomy there that you're in this deep sleep state. However, you're, that's where you have all the eye flutter and your most, I guess, allowed to think about things you wouldn't normally think about during the day. So I was, I've been thinking a lot about sleep. And I've thought about consciousness. I've been through different levels of consciousness as I've been through life, and probably everyone has. One level of consciousness, and I think you all have experienced this, when you are in between waking up and sleeping, you start feeling like you don't have any, I'm sorry, you're able to call upon every faculty in your mind and you're not affected by the outside world. I'd say your inhibitions are very low and you're able to remember lots of things. So haven't you felt like you've been very creative during these times where you're in this dreamy state in between sleep and dreaming. Wouldn't it be nice to call upon that level where you could have access to all parts of your brain without inhibitions of the outside world? I think I've been able to do that sometimes. One time I'll bring up, and they both have to do with football. One time <laughs> when I was in high school, there was a big game, and I was a junior, and we were playing this really tough team that always beat us, but we were undefeated. And I was a junior, and I hadn't been in the varsity level that long, so I was really excited. And before the game, as a defensive back, you'll go through some tackling drills. So we went through this tackling drill like we do every single week, and I hit the guy, and I suffered a light concussion. I could not tell you where I was. I sort of knew where I was, but I didn't know what day it was or what time it was. And the coach came over and he, he said, what's the matter with Spirito? Is he nervous about the game? What's up with this? No, I said, he got hit before practice. So he was talking to me and he carries me over to the cheerleaders and he said, do you know any of those cheerleaders' names? And I named off a couple of them. He's like, you're fine. <laughs> so, John, before we knew about concussions, I played 
an entire half of football in that level of between consciousness and sleep is what I'm saying. My reactions were great. I had an interception. I had plenty of tackles. But if you go back and try to ask me about anything that happened during those two quarters, it's all foggy. I came back the second half, and my, you know, I had all my faculties back. But this is what happens to a lot of football players. So I am very happy that today we're looking into this. My son had a concussion during practice, and they took him off the field for a week. And they have this test that you go through nowadays to determine whether or not you have a concussion or not. So I think that's great. All right, I will close with the other story about football and sleeping. As a college football player, it was my third year, and it took me two or three years just to get on the travel squad at the University of Florida. So I was riding on the bus going to the game, and this was going to be our first game on national TV. Back then, we only had three channels. <laughs> so we were going to be on CBS. So the entire bus ride, I was in this hypnotic state saying, I'm going to make, I'm going to do something great. I'm going to make the first tackle. So I'm, just, I'm going to make the first tackle. I'm going to be on kickoff. We're going to kick off, and I'm going to make the first tackle. I said that to myself over and over and over. I got off the bus, got dressed. We went out on the field. We happened to kick off. We were playing Miami. And I ran down, and I made the first tackle. So what I'll tell you is sleep is very important. However, I think it's also important to allow your mind not to be so inhibited by all the surroundings that you have. Now, I'm not saying go have a concussion. No, that's not good. But what I'm saying is you should take a little bit of that hypnotic state with you when you're trying to accomplish something that you haven't accomplished before. Maybe it's taking a big test. Try to call upon that unconscious level that can take you to the next level. 